All right. Welcome, everybody, to Standing for Truth. My name is Donnie Bedinsky, and I am here with Tom, my co-host, and Dr. Dino to counter an evolutionary biologist with a wild imagination. Dr. Dan Stern Cardinal, who goes by Creation Myths on YouTube, he is going to be forced to change his channel name to Evolution Myths after we are done with him here tonight. Kent, it's great to have you as always, brother. Why don't we hand it to you for some context? We did an open mic challenge as we usually do a uh, about a week ago. Dr. Dan Stern Cardinal, a, an evolutionary biologist, joined the chat to provide evidence for evolution. And so we're gonna examine that so-called evidence. Uh, Dr. Kent, let's, let's hand it to you, brother. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great, brother. God is good. We have visitors coming from all over the place to see our dinosaur adventure land in Lenox, Alabama. You got to come down, brother. It's a blast down here. When it's about 40 below up there in Canada, come on down. Well, yes, <laughs> yeah, a couple of nights ago, we did the uh, open mic and Dan uh, was supposed to provide evidence for evolution. He never did. He just kept questioning me if I knew about the mechanisms of evolution, like gene transfer and gene duplication and stuff like that. He never did give any evidence. So then he did a uh, because I did not remember some of the terms he was using from 50 years ago when I studied them. He did a YouTube just a couple of days ago called uh, uh, Kent Hovind Doesn't Know Evolution Basics. Well, yes, I do. Okay. It doesn't happen at all. There is no evolution. It's a religion they believe in. So, yeah, uh, I, I studied all those things he mentioned years and years ago. And so I had to I refresh myself now and I'm ready to go. So, but it has nothing to do with it. He, he, he's, he's so desperate to give to show how smart he is because he knows big vocabulary words, but he doesn't ever get to the point. Do none of these things he mentioned and Donnie, you can talk about them a little bit tonight too. None of them are going to provide, provide a mechanism for evolution. It's what they teach. That's the best they've got, but there is no, there's no evolution. Nobody's ever seen a cow produce a non cow or a dog produce a non dog ever in the history of the world. It's not science. It's a religious belief. So I love picking on the atheists and evolutionists and, uh, uh, more fun than anybody ought to be allowed to have. All of his so-called evidences for evolution. I mentioned this the other night when I was when he was live on the air. I said, Dan, all you're showing is how you think a living thing can change to another living thing. You're obviously skipping over the many vital steps to get to a living thing. Like where did time, space, matter come from? How did life get started? He wants to ignore those and start with life already existing. It's not how science works, Dan. You better have a complete theory. And the burden of proof is on all these evolutionists. If they want all of us to pay for their religion to be taught, they better prove it is science. And they cannot do that. They never have. They never will. The first four steps of evolution, cosmic, chemical, stellar, organic, he wants to skip all those because they're nothing but religious belief. He wants to go right to, well, what about changing from one kind to another? What about gene transfer? The gene is really complex. Let's go back and figure out how did the gene arise from hot rock from an explosion of nothing exploding? He does not want you to look at the man behind the curtain. There, there is no right. Oz. There is no Wizard of Oz, you know. You know what genetic drift is. Yeah, okay. And I told him. And then he said, well, you didn't answer the question. I didn't give the exact wording that he wanted. So anyway, this ought to be fun, Donnie. Go ahead. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Excuse me. There is a, a bait and switch at play. Right. An equivocation fallacy. <clears throat> so we ask for evidence for evolution. They go on to define evolution as change over time or change in allele frequencies and populations over time. And then by that definition, they mean particles to people, molecules to man, fish to fishermen, evolution. No, taking that jump from change over time to bacteria like organisms evol evolving into biologists over time is not is not the same thing. Right, Kent. We're we're not afraid of change over time or microevolutionary variations in biological uh, organisms. We're looking for large scale change, isn't that right, Kent? Well, that's why I, I, years ago I decided this word evolution is too slippery. Let's define what we're talking about, because they very much do talk about cosmic evolution as a real thing. You have to get the origin of time, space, matter. Their answer to that is, well, the Big Bang. Okay. What banged? What did it bang into? Where did space come from? Where did the energy come from? Where did the matter come from? They don't, where did time come from? They don't have answers to any of those. Now, the creationists admit we believe by faith. God did that. They will not admit it. It's a faith to believe in the Big Bang, purely a faith. It's a religious belief, which is fine. Keep your religion. I don't care. 
But don't make all of us pay to have that religion taught in the schools because it's not part of science. And if there was a big bang, it would have produced hydrogen and some helium and maybe a little lithium, they're saying. Okay, we could use that for the batteries. Uh, but they got to have chemical evolution to produce all the elements. Then they have to have stellar evolution. Stars have to form. Nobody's ever seen a star form, ever. We see them blow up once in a while. That's all. Nova, Nova. And then organic evolution, the origin of life. This is a huge one that he wants to skip right over and start right in. Okay, we've already got these genes. Now how do we transfer them? Stop, stop, stop. Those genes are really complex. Like saying, we've already got this computer code. Now how did it make a duplicate and make a mistake in another computer? The code itself, somebody had to write that code. He wants to skip those very badly. Cause, cause <clears throat> right. Yeah. I've heard you point out it's a four-bit code, ATCG, four-dimensional, the, the fourth dimension being time. It's a, a highly sophisticated uh, system, and they want to skip all that, Ken. Right. And so that's why we're going to go through the section where Dan provided his evidence, genetic drift, recombination, constructive neutral evolution and gene duplication from memory. And we're going to tackle those one by one. We're going to see if by those pieces of, of so-called evidence, does that mean fish have evolved into fishermen over time? So praise. Oh, hang on. Oh. So keep in mind, he is not giving evidence for evolution. He's giving the mechanism for how it works. Right. Right. That's not giving evidence. Okay, go ahead. That's a great point. Praise. We can pull up on your end the video that we are going to respond to brother so let me know when you've got it up on the screen and is it coming through for you praise i see yeah. fine yep. praise before you start how are you tonight brother thanks for helping us out here with the tech stuff oh i'm i'm doing well it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with kent and you you guys are evolution destroyers and i love <laughs> learning from you guys yeah, just glad to well, be. We here. enjoy it. We live for it. Live, breathe. If I could stay up twenty four hours a day refuting evolution, I would. But <laughs> unfortunately, we got to sleep now and again. So praise. Okay, appreciate you uh, being here, and let's let's start the video. And Kent, feel free to either just uh, interject or lift up your finger or something, and we'll stop when you when you'd like to. I'll do the same. Go ahead, praise. 30, 30 set Donnie, we're doing 30 seconds. The, the, yeah, let's go 30 seconds. Keep it a little more yeah. fast paced. Yeah, 30 seconds. I dig it. Okay. Right. So here's what I want to, uh, for the first 30 seconds, is going to be framing because, you know, it takes time. But basically what I'll start with is this. <clears throat> Kent's here saying evolution doesn't work. You can't create new things. Kinds always stay the same kind. Dogs always give birth to dogs. Yeah, yeah, Crazy. Yeah, all Pause it real quick. Is it kind of lagging work. for you as well? um it's Lightly. not laggy on my end but it might okay. be on the stream though it's kind of coming in a little laggy but we can hear the audio so i guess that's all that yeah, matters feel, okay feel free to continue well i got a whole list of mechanisms here and i can give examples of how they work to do the things that kent says they can't do now i don't have you know i probably already down to 10 seconds here so i'll just yeah. say this let's start with genetic drift kent Tell us about genetic drift and what it is and what it can or cannot do. Okay. Hang okay. On. Notice he's trying to shift the burden of proof to me. The whole purpose of the debate that night was for him to provide evidence for evolution and for him to say, I have to now explain what genetic drift is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to provide evidence for evolution. Genetic drift, we can talk about that and we will here in a minute, but that's not, it's not the burden of proof, not on me. You believe an amoeba turned to a whale and a human and a pig and a flower. It that doesn't we never see that happen. So yeah, this was a slick method. What did you call it, Donnie? Before we got started the program tonight, you called it. Uh, what's he doing? I called it the pedantic fallacy. Right, right. <laughs> Praise. He, want, he wants to teach me. He knows some words right. that I that I studied, you know, 30, 40 years ago, and don't use normally, so I don't remember all them. There's a lot of physics formulas I, I learned years ago, and I, I, I could review them. I didn't memorize all of them. I know, you know, so what? I learned it. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this is a this is definitely a pedantic fallacy. I like that. The teaching. <laughs> he wants to, he wants to be my he wants to show the audience how smart he is because I don't know something. Okay, I know what genetic drift is. Okay, and I explained it to him. He did not like my answer because I didn't give the exact words he wanted. Right. So go ahead, play him. Let him play. 
Praise hey, that was essentially 30 seconds. So let's reset the timer. And I appreciate keeping it to one topic at a time. Kent, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. The genetic drift, the genetic code of any living creature is phenomenally complex. And within that code, that there can be a drift back and forth. Two, two humans, a man and a woman, can produce 20 children. All of them have different variations. They're still human. The drift is limited. Mm -hmm. They're not going to drift into a banana. They're going to stay a human, okay? The dogs have drifted back and forth between Chihuahua and Great Dane, mostly selected by man. Sure, there is genetic drift. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cause any evolution at all. It's, it's limited to the same kind of creature. Every time we've observed it, every farmer on the planet will tell you there is genetic drift, but it's limited. Okay. okay. So, Go ahead, Dan. Okay, so you don't know what genetic drift means, right? Watch That's it now. What I told you. I just told no, you what it means. You, know, you didn't. Okay. You didn't say, you didn't get it right. That's not Praise. genetic drift. Can you pause Have it? You ever All right, there you go. See? Yeah. He, he wants to keep the burden of proof on me because I did not give the exact answer he wanted. That is, by the way, exactly correct. Genetic drift. There's a drift. Well, I'll show you. Here's from Berserkly website. They ought to b believe in evolution. I, I spoke there before. <laughs> okay. Berserkly University. Understanding evolution. Genetic drift. Here it is. One of the basic mechanisms of evolution. In each generation, some individuals may, just by chance, leave behind a few more descendants, have a few more kids. You know what I said? One couple can produce 20 kids, and they're all different. Uh, the genes and other genetic elements of the next generation will be those of the lucky individuals, not necessarily the healthier or better. You know, so not survival of the fittest, it's survival of the luckiest, okay? That, in a nutshell, is genetic drift. It happens all populations. And to give you the example, somebody goes through and steps on all of the green bugs, and then all the brown bugs survive. They're still the bug. It didn't change it to an elephant, okay? It's still a bug. It's a, it's a selection of a certain part of the population, which Adolf Hitler tried to do. Let's select the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegian and Germans to survive and kill everybody else. We use hypothetical cartoon. Genetic drift affects the genetic makeup of the population, but unlike natural selection, through, through an entire random process. So although genetic drift is a mechanism, it doesn't work to produce adaptations. Genetic drift is still the same creature. Yeah, that's what I said. It's drifting back and forth between a Chihuahua and a Great Dane. If somebody, if all of a sudden Chihuahuas became popular and everybody, nobody liked big dogs anymore. So they send them to that place where they're eating them, I guess, dogs and, and cats. Okay. Pretty soon the whole population of the world would be full of small dogs. It's still a dog. They cannot possibly change it from that to an elephant or a pine tree. And it's certainly not evidence that all creatures had a common ancestor. Well, these stupid family trees that they show in our textbooks. This, as I've said hundreds of times, and I'll say it till I die. And then my videos are going to keep saying it after I'm dead. So you guys doesn't do any good to kill me. They say all of the creatures have a common ancestor called an amoeba or bacteria of some kind. This is not, a, this is not science. This is a religious belief. They believe that. And genetic drift from a bacteria or an amoeba or whatever you want to start with, protozoa, it's going to drift back and forth between the certain types of protozoa, and it's never going to go to something else. But they think that is one of the mechanisms to change it to a human. I'm sorry. That's stupid. Tell them I said so. Real stupid. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, that's right. And it goes back to this fallacy that we talked about earlier, pedantic fallacy. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's dismissing an argument based on an irrelevant detail. In this case, Kent, he didn't like your definition or how you answered the question. And so therefore microbes evolved into man or whales and strawberries are related through common ancestry. Certainly not the, not the case. So, okay. Praise continue on brother heard have you ever heard of the phrase constructive neutral evolution have you heard of that wait before you before you answer and i'll let you ask again to refresh um so the, we're looking for evidence of evolution yeah. and not not a quiz and i appreciate yeah. and, and sam, sam in teaching. order we have to have the same hold vocabulary on, on, Dan, but what what we would like for you to do okay to, i'll just define it for him genetic is just no, 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 no 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 this is no this is me and Ken. no 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 yeah, so so Dan, like we're looking for evidence, not a mm -hmm. mini quiz. Yeah, yeah, so and, 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 and I'm not getting, a, I'm so lesson. Like you talked at the beginning, Donnie, this isn't a time to lecture. Just uh -huh. tell me. Yeah, right. tell me. All lecture. right, I'm gonna, tell I'm me. just gonna define it for him. No, no, I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. We're keeping it going. Dan is going to jump in to hold Kent's hand here. He's the expert, fellas. He's the expert. No one needs to hold Kent's hand here. 
I asked him to explain what genetic drift is. He got it wrong. He didn't do it. That's okay. That's okay. Genetic drift is random changes in allele frequency in a population. That's what that means. That's what you Yeah, mean. and actually, no. actually, that's actually. Okay, Phantom, I'm going to jump Thank in. You. Phantom, I don't appreciate you just jumping in. Time Praise, after pause time it real after quick. Being told time after time not to do so. Random changes of alleles, the random changes in the frequency of, of alleles in population. So you used an example earlier. Uh, and here's the thing. This is what these evolutionary professors will do in class. Oh, yeah. uh, a student will be wondering, is evolution true? Are we really related to all forms of life, including strawberries and banana plants? And they'll just list off these, these mechanisms like genetic drift, genetic recombination, as if they are answering that question about large scale evolution when in reality they're not. It'd be like if me and you, Kent, went out hunting and we decided arbitrarily to shoot or hunt all the biggest bucks. Okay, so the bucks have nothing to do with this. It's, it's random, it's by chance. And so now all that's left are the smaller bucks since we killed all the large bucks. Okay, so now that population has drifted. It will drift into a population of small bucks. It's still a buck. It's not changing a buck into something other than a buck. It's not demonstrating that bucks are related to strawberries. So he gave what he thinks is the best definition and that doesn't help answer the question of, of evolution nor does it give any evidence. He's, he's going to spend his whole time going through the mechanisms of evolution without giving mm. evidence that it actually happened. Show me where an animal, any animal, any animal or plant in the world has ever produced offspring that anybody with two functioning brain cells would consider a new kind. We never see that. We see dogs make dogs and cows make cows and amoeba make an amoeba, and that's all that we see. That is science. God said 20 times in the first seven chapters, they will bring forth after their kind, after their kind, after their kind, after their kind, after their kind. That's science. His evolution chart is not science. Go ahead. Okay. Actually, praise before you do, I want to put up this comment here because from my understanding, so Rosnia here says you're conflating genetic drift and natural selection with your buck analogy. No, from my understanding, natural selection has to do with reproduction. Who's having the most babies. Okay. Evolutionists like to say that natural selection is non-random. Okay. So the ones that are having the most babies, they're going to be the most fittest survival of the fittest differential reproduction. But what they say, like Dan, genetic drift is chance. It's random. It'd be like if there was a flood and a thousand people died in the flood. Well, it has that would have nothing to do with natural selection. It doesn't have to do with how many people are having babies or how many babies. It's a flood that just randomly killed a thousand people. Okay, so that removes some traits and alleles out of the population randomly. But again, that's not going to take your fish to fishermen. Natural selection, Ken, is natural selection a mechanism for evolutionary change, brother? No, natural selection selects. It doesn't create anything. Artificial selection selects. Dog breeders for years have been artificially selecting a particular trait that they want. You know, long hair, short hair, curly hair, curly tail, whatever. Stupid, like my wife, pug dog. Okay, <laughs> somebody selected for that. Anyway, all they do is select from traits already existing. I say, if I wanted to create a population of people over 30 feet tall, so I go through the population and kill everybody under 30 feet. Well, I'm not going to create 30 foot people. There's nothing to select from. You have to start with something to select from. You could probably create a population of all black cows by killing every cow that's not black. Pretty soon you get all black cows. You already had black cows. You selected a gene code that already existed. Natural selection does not create anything. Neither does artificial selection. Darwin's book title based about natural selection. And it doesn't, it doesn't create any evolution at all. They're dreaming. He wants, that's why they want to skip the first four parts of this evolution stuff. But where do you get life? Where do you get matter? Where do you get energy? Where did this right. DNA code come from to select from? So anyway, go ahead. Brett. Very good. I like it. Praise. Let's continue on. <clears throat> I think he's into constructive neutral evolution currently. So we'll engage that in, in a minute. Praise. Go ahead. So we're going to open it up. It'll be fr a free for all very soon. So just be patient and and wait. Can okay. Dan? Okay. Let, 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 let's start with Can again. Then, whoa, then whoa, whoa. Donnie, I got to get my next Donnie, thirty seconds. Donnie, I did answer his question very yeah. clearly. 
genetic yeah. drift is the ability of the genetic code of a two couples mating or something to yeah. the allele frequencies can vary, but they're limited, aren't they, Dan? Okay, so thank you for again answering the question. Still not getting it right, but that's okay. My for my next thing, I want to uh, basically ask you if you've ever heard the phrase. I won't even take the whole thirty seconds. Have you heard the phrase? It's a tight. It's related to genetic drift because the point of genetic drift is that it's a neutral mechanism. It's a non-selective mechanism of evolution. Have you heard the phrase constructive neutral evolution? Have you heard that phrase? Pause it there, praise. That is. I, I, you see how you see how he just said that genetic drift is a non-selective mechanism. Okay, so it's more random or happens by chance. Again, with the examples we've used, Kent, that's not going to uh, explain large-scale evolutionary changes. It's not going to explain an increase in phenotypic complexity. It's not going to take microbes to man. So genetic drift and natural selection, both mechanisms fail. Yeah, they both work as far as they drift back, but they're limited. See, there's limits with the dog. I, I say, guys, sure, the gene, you can select smaller dogs or bigger dogs, but they run into a brick wall pretty soon. They now have the world's smallest dog is 3.8 inches tall, less than four inches. Okay, why don't they get a dog as small as a flea? There are animals like <laughs> small as a flea, you know, like a flea. And there are animals like a hamster. If they don't, they, they, well, it's not a mammal. Okay, take a hamster or a mouse, a pygmy mouse. Okay, there are mammals that small. There is a limit to how big and how small dogs can get. You're never going to get a dog as big as Texas. Right. It's not going to happen. So that's what you just can't get them to understand or admit that this natural selection and artificial selection both are selecting from an existing gene code. They're not creating anything and they're limited. You'll never get them to admit that. Well, Kent, you and I, we were engaging in two open mics ago. We were engaging a student of evolution in university and we were asking him, so you believe at some point billions of years ago, the earth comprised nothing in terms of life other than single celled like organisms. And he said, yeah. Okay. So you have a planet with nothing but bacteria like organisms, but today what do we have? Whales, monkeys, strawberries, banana plants. So that's a whole lot of new information that needs to be added. That's hundreds of thousands of novel genes. And these mechanisms that Dan is, is pointing to, in my study, genetic drift typically reduces genetic variation. Well, we need the addition of things. We, we need true novelty. So it's certainly not going to explain the, the question that we're posing these evolutionists to answer. Praise. Go ahead, brother. I heard that phrase about four. Okay. Seconds. So why doesn't it generate new traits, right? What is the limiting, what is the limiting principle for constructive neutral evolution? Well, I think the burden of proof is on you to show me that it does work. Show me an example where it's happened. Farmers have okay. been trying to select for more milk or more beef or bigger cows or smaller cows. Dog, dog breeders have been trying with, in, with intense human effort. They try to make this happen, not just natural selection, artificial selection. And they, they're running into a brick wall every time. Show me an example where it has changed to something new. You're, you're supposed to be defending your religion tonight. By the way, there's no such thing as a uh, evolutionary biologist. Okay. They're two separate categories. Go ahead. It's time. Well, Donnie, let, let uh, me explain that Dan? real quick. There you go. I, 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 sorry. I, I think I need to explain that. Biology, bio means life. Ology is the study of. So a biologist studies life. Evolutionary biologist is mixing a religion with a science. I love biology. I taught it for 15 years. I'm loaded, surrounded by biology books from all college, college class and junior high and high school. And uh, I love bi biology. It's great. Okay. But evolution has nothing to do with it. Evolution, to be an evolutionary biologist is like saying I'm a, a Hindu physicist, a Hindu rocket scientist. So what, what your religion has nothing to do with your science, okay? And he's conflating, he's confusing his religion, evolution, with his scientific background. He may know a lot of biology. I don't know. He may know a lot about anatomy, the names of the muscles, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, and all that stuff. And he may know all about, uh, you know, all kinds of biology, things that he, of how plants grow and stuff like that. Okay. There's nothing to do with evolution. So that's, that's why I made that comment to him. Well, brother, an evolutionary biologist is simply a, an apostle of their science fiction religion. Amen. That's who they look to as their prophets. <laughs> I, I like that. Praise God, brother. Okay. So 
I want the audience to notice what Kent just did there because I asked a very specific question about constructive neutral evolution, which is a very specific mechanism of evolution, a subset of the neutral mechanisms of evolution. And what he did is he went to his script rather than answer the question, right? That's okay. We don't, we don't, if you're not, you're not, you're not you're right? drift or neutral theory. Is what Dan is doing, is that not a script? He's got a list of questions he wants to ask. No, no, he's, looking... he doesn't, he, he's, he's got a list of mechanisms he wants to offer without, he's trying <laughs> yeah, to right. avoid, he's trying to avoid offering any evidence because there is none. Blow up my screen there. Would you put it up online? Okay. Constructive neutral evolution, a process by which complexity can arise or increase in a neutral fashion. They're making a statement on uh, link.springer.com. They're not giving, they're not showing, this is not science to make a statement. It doesn't make it true. Anybody can make statements. They're saying, well, it's a, it's a complexity, a process by which complexity can arise. Well, show me one. We don't ever see more complex things come from less complex things. They want to add complexity. That's like saying oh, your Model T can all of a sudden add an air conditioner. Air conditioning system is really complex. It's more than just say, saying the words. Somebody designed an air conditioner to go in the Ford over the generations. But it, see, they, they just make a statement. Well, it happened. No, no, show me, show me how it happened. They can't because it doesn't work. Go ahead. But yes, I know what constructive neutral evolution is, Dan. Yeah, and it's not constructing anything. No, <laughs> it's no, not constructing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's, here's my answer to constructive neutral evolution. So I took some notes. And it, it has to do with genetic drift because basically they're saying, well, evolu forward evolution, large scale evolution can happen outside of selection because this is a non-selective way that new traits and evolution can come about. <clears throat> but the problem with genetic drift, as we've pointed out, Kent, is it doesn't result in novel, sophisticated systems. Okay, again, they admit that they believe in a planet billions of years ago that comprised nothing but single-celled like ancestors. Okay, so to take, let, let, let's even take a worm, a worm to a fish. There's some true novel traits that need to come about. F fish have gills, fish uh, are uh, totally different creatures that require novel, sophisticated systems, and genetic drift isn't going to provide those mechanisms, okay? And another thing is they say neutral, right? Constructive neutral evolution. But these mutations that actually accumulate, that they want to say will add the necessary variation for evolution to take place, they're now understood as nearly neutral. That means they're slightly deleterious. Selection can't see them. And so, yeah, they're subject to genetic drift, but what they do is they spread. And so rather than vertical evolution, rather than large scale evolution, these mutations spread, drift into populations and degenerate biological populations of organisms. So Kent, you've pointed out before that we don't see evolution, we see extinction. We right. see devolution. We see degeneration, not forward evolution. Well, also, Donnie, mutations, a, a scrambling of an existing, already existing gene code, like a typographical error. Could you be typing a book and make a typographical error and improve the book? Right. Add new, add new thoughts, maybe. Pretty tough, you know, to scramble the existing letters to make a uh, improve the book. I doubt it. But see, nobody's ever seen one. We see mutations all the time. I keep asking them, where are the beneficial mutations? How, how, what's it going to take to mutate? Let's take, call it a bacteria, a single cell creature. This bacteria is going to somehow, through mutations, accumulate new information to become a whale. Whales have lots of things bacteria don't have. Let's see, whales have lungs. Whales have flippers. Whales have eyes. Do, bacteria don't have any of that. How many lines of code are necessary to make an eye? There were none of those lines of code in the bacteria. So they just they just make a statement. Oh, it happened, boys and girls, and you better believe it. All Dan is proving here is he was thoroughly brainwashed in his education. He became a disciple of his religion of zealot, and he's he pr promoting it <laughs> as best he knows how. He's nothing but a religious zealot. Okay. He is validating our title tonight amen it's which is <laughs> evolutionary <laughs> biologist with wild imaginations uh brother so yeah uh great points right there okay uh praise continue on
theory, constructive neutral evolution. That's fine. We can move on to another topic. Oh, no, um, that's, you tell me. Well, that's that. fine. Stay Hold on that on. topic. Stay on that topic. Tell me how that justifies teaching something like this. Right. This and that's a good question. For you Everything's that, related that. to an amoeba. Everything came from a single cell creature of some kind. Okay. We'll no. call it an amoeba. <clears throat> how does what you just said justify teaching this to the children? Uh, no, that's not what I No, I'm not going to do that because I'm not uh, going to just buy into your script. Uh, we're not going to do that. Not so script. here's what, so what here's, so, hey, it's my turn. I get thirty seconds. Right. You yeah, hold on, Dan. Dan, Dan you're uh, get, pause Dan, it real quick. Your... Hey, notice how he uh, he makes an assertion, right, Ken? But he can't back it up. He says script. Right. But all you did was ask a basic question. Justify your appeal to genetic drift. Here's the universal phylogenetic tree of life. It's found in all kids' textbooks. How does genetic drift explain your single solid like ancestor to turning into to man, turning into whales, strawberries? And then he dodges. Dodgeball Dan is what we like to call him. Amen. Right he dodged every, everything. All he does is give, he's trying to give a list of mechanisms. He's not ever throughout this whole thing trying to give an example or some scientific provable evidence that it happened. Because it there isn't any. Go ahead. That's right. Praise. Go ahead, brother. For 30 seconds. I am timing it, by the way, for everyone to see. But just real, real quick. I mean, you're just running your your um your your quiz inquisitive script, right? So we yeah. you don't need to accuse people of doing the script because you're doing your script, Amen. he's doing his script. But what what we're looking for again for the audience is proof of evolution. Mm -hmm. Not questioning whether or not Kent knows something. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm looking, Donnie, you're looking, mm -hmm. Kent, I know you've been looking for, you know, your hair is getting gray. You've been looking for so long, <laughs> minus two. But yeah, so Dan, if you have that instead of a quiz yeah. script, that'd hmm. be great. Hey, Sam. Oh, hey, go ahead, hey, you got hey, 30 seconds. Hey, well, no, right, first right of now. all, first of all, first of all, I'm going to say this to Sam because he did this last time I was here too, running interference for Kent when Kent doesn't <laughs> know the answers to the questions. I see the clock going and I appreciate that. Thank you. I hope you pause this real quick because I need so, to let the audience know something. Okay. The audience should notice what we title these open mic challenges is prove us. That's a plural. P prove us wrong. Okay. So if Sam wants to jump in and he wants to, to moderate or he wants to point out that Dan is failing to prove us wrong, then he can do so. Okay. That's why we say prove us wrong. He, he needs to prove all three of us wrong. And he is not doing so. And that, that's pretty clear, Kent, as you've demonstrated, I think. Praise. Go ahead, brother. I want to, since, yeah. since, Look, constructive neutral evolution, here's a mechanism for you. Gene duplication, right? And we can talk about that if you want. Oh, here we go. We all need to know what the words mean. Do you know what the Luria-Delbruck fluctuation test is? It's one of the most famous experiments in evolution. Have you heard of that? Because that explains... No, let, let's pause right. it there. One, one, one point or topic at a time. So Kent, he brought up gene duplication. So is gene duplication a, a viable mechanism for large-scale evolution? Absolutely not. It's a duplication of information that's already there. If I had a line of code to tell, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word probably have identical lines of code. Let's say both of them go to the same spell check. Let's assume that they do. I, I suspect they do. Okay. So when I'm doing my PowerPoint, it's, I underlines a red word, word in red and I, I click spell check and it comes to, it tells me the right way to spell it. The same thing happens when I'm working in Microsoft Word. Okay. So does that, does suppose I had two spell check programs loaded in my computer or the same program loaded 45 times in my computer? It's the same thing. It's a gene is incredibly complex. To duplicate that complex gene is not going to make anything new. It's like I told him, and you'll see the illustration here. I said, if I give you here, I'm going to give you this book to read. No, I'm going to give you 40 copies of this book. It's the same book, same information. Right. <clears throat> Gene duplication is not going to help evolution at all. It's a duplication of an already phenomenally complex gene code. Who wrote the code, Dan? You're skipping the first four. <laughs> Kent, you nailed it. So he here's my book on ERV. Let's say I gave you two copies. Hey, wow. Kent, I'm going to send you a copy of my ERV book. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send you two. Okay. Wow. Is that adding any additional information? No, you just have a second copy of, of a book that you either already own or now I'm giving you. Now they'll get fancy. So they'll continue, right? Their evolutionary philosophy. The fancy word for it is neo-functionalization. They'll say, okay, but that second book can now start accumulating typographical errors, 
it can start accumulating mutations. And so now the new book is going to be different than the book before it was it was duplicated. So the duplicated gene, according to them, is is evolving or changing. But I would just say, no, now you have a more degenerated copy of the previous book. You adding spelling mistakes and errors to the duplicated version is not going to move things forward. Right. Okay. Let's uh let's and this is the best they got, Kent. So if if memory serves me right, <laughs> so far genetic drift constructive neutral evolution and now gene duplication correct oh for three for the evolutionary biologist go ahead praise that so experiment your, so your question is gene duplication it's it's back to a quiz to show he's smart i'm done yeah quiz? yeah that's exactly yes Listen, that's what it is I could, a, I could give you a thousand bible questions you can't answer either yeah because okay? i'm not show a bible me, like, <laughs> I'm not on, expert in the Bible. show me the evidence Wait. show me the evidence that backs up this stupid chart that we're teaching the kids <laughs> show me the evidence this is what it's about tonight the burden of proof is on you guys to show that evolution is not a religion we believe all of this change from an amoeba to a whale is a religious belief show me how it isn't that's the purpose of your de uh, that's the purpose of the debate tonight Show us evidence of your fairy tale, Dad. If I give you seconds. words, yeah, seconds. if I Go give ahead. you words and you don't know what they mean, then it's pointless. So I have to find Hang something on. that you know what it means before Hang I can talk about it. Hey, Donnie, this is what he's doing again. He's saying, "Look, I know words that you don't know. I read, I saw an experiment uh, that you didn't see. Therefore, I'm smart. Follow me. You're dumb. Okay? It's still avoiding the whole point of the debate. Where's the evidence?" Not do I know what this word means. Where's the evidence? He says, well, this is the mechanism for how it works. Okay, show me that. Okay, okay. example of gene duplication is Down syndrome. Right. That's all the known examples I've ever seen are negative, new, uh, it's harmful, sometimes fatal. There isn't any, there aren't any examples where gene duplication is going to drive an amoeba to a whale. There aren't any, it's not even going to drive it in the right direction. It's, uh, they're so desperate though. They want to and see the college professors will dazzle their students in their class with all this stuff. And a kid thinks, wow, I better I better learn this because he's going to give me a grade and that de determines my future income, you know. So, yeah, they're going to believe it and puke it back up on the test for the teacher. And it, it's, it's, without getting any evidence at all, they get completely baffled. There's no man behind the curtain. There is no Wizard of Oz, guys. There is no evolution. I'm sorry. None. Right. They're 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 very good at reciting their evolutionary philosophy or evolutionary yeah. story. Dr. Dan, he he's famous. He's in the chat, creation myths. He needs to change his, his channel name to evolution myths now after this. He says, I get a whole show, lucky me. Yes, you've earned a, a Wednesday counter, uh, Dan. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He gave, he gave a whole show about me a couple of days ago. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Believe me, I got lots bigger fish to fry than him, but I just thought, since he brought up some things, uh, we should at least answer them. Now, here's what's going to happen. He will not accept our answer. He'll go right back to his script. He'll say, aha, these five, th these five, ev these five mechanisms for evolution is proof that it happened. He's not going to ever give any examples. For instance, this chart has a line connecting the, ca the uh, kangaroo and the beaver. Where has any beaver ever produced a non-beaver or a kangaroo produced a non-kangaroo? And those are two mammals, let alone are you going to say a penguin or a, a, a bird and a, 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 let's see, a bug. There you got a cockroach. This is the stuff we're teaching the kid. That's my objection. This None of this is science. He may find a mechanism that might change, you know, a, a wolf and a dog and a coyote and variations within this, what obviously is the same kind. And I've said many times, the animals don't care how we classify them. They don't even know we're doing it. They just, they know what their kind is. Let them loose in the woods. They'll find their own kind. The squirrels on our property here never even look at the, at the, uh, uh, at the donkeys as a possible mate or the horses or the chickens. Never even think about it. They look for another squirrel. They know what they look like. And I'm sorry, they don't even know what they look like, but they know what to look for. So evolution is nothing but a religion. And all Dan did, from my humble opinion, is prove the title of our, our script of your our show was right, Donnie. Evolution's a religion. Prove us wrong. He never did. He tried to divert attention to all these mechanisms. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if there's a if there is a mechanism for evolution. That still wouldn't matter. It's a you believe it happened. 
if I say there's a mechanism that'll turn a, a iron ore rock into a nail, there may be a mechanism, okay? But show me it happening. It doesn't happen in nature. We have iron ore rock all over our gravel pit here. You have to you have to use intelligence and process it, melt it down, and you know do the processing to turn it into a nail. So you can say I have a mechanism. I believe a meteor fell on this iron ore and you know, out came a nail. Well, show me show me where it happens. There isn't any hands-on observable evidence for this happening. It's something they simply believe. Right, like James W here and a few others in the chat. <laughs> Excuse me. He's saying, no, mutation creates new diversity. This is the answer to drift reduction of diversity argument. No, we've already demonstrated earlier that mutations are deleterious, disease causing. It would be like the dents and rust spots on your car, Kent. Okay, yeah, it, it's making the car more diverse. It's giving it more variation, but it's not useful variation. You mentioned earlier, like, for example, if I'm writing an article, Okay, and I'm writing an article and I make a typo by accident. Maybe I accidentally duplicate a letter or I hit the backspace key. So there's a deletion. That's not making my article any better. Okay, these mutations are not making things better and providing helpful variation for selection to act upon. Kent, what are your thoughts, brother? Right. That's why I keep asking, where's an example of a beneficial mutation? And keep in mind, if you had one, you'd have to have two male and female in the same place it's a pretty big world and at the same time what if one mutation produced some in, improved information but it was 40 years from the other one of the other sex see it's way more complicated than just getting a, a beneficial mutation i don't think they can prove a beneficial mutation at all and you certainly can't prove that two of them happened at the same time in the same place and and then you can't prove that they found each other and fell in love and got married or had kids and then they got to take over the whole population so this new improved species now has to take over. So all the rest of the inferiors have to die. This is Adolf Hitler 101. That's all it is, brother. Well, and the best they could point to, as you said earlier, Kat, are things breaking down, pre-existing systems being destroyed for, for a benefit. You've got a lot of countries that are side by side. They go to war and one country is sending its tanks over a bridge. Okay, so the other country des decides to destroy their own bridge. Okay, that's a benefit in wartime because now the, ta the tanks can't cross the bridge. Okay, that's like what we see with these beneficial mutations. But guess what? That's not explaining how we designed the bridge, how the bridge came about. That's just explaining how we destroy pre-existing systems. And that's the best they can offer. That's a good, good illustration. Yep. Praise. Go ahead, brother. Give me so, evidence. Give, well, forget hey. the word. Forget the words. Give me evidence. Show me where an animal has ever time. changed. Okay. Well, yeah. So, so, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. You got 15 you. more seconds. And then yeah. So we can't talk about genetic drift. We can't talk about constructive neutral evolution because you don't know what those words mean. You don't know what the Luria Delbrook fluctuation test is. Hang on. How about Donnie. recombination? That's a way Donnie. to get right. You, I gotta go potty. You handle his next comment. He, he just, he's still on his same script. Okay. You don't know my words. Therefore, uh, you're dumb. I'm smart. This is not <laughs> answering the question. Where's the evidence for evolution? So you handle the next one, Donnie. I'll be right back. Okay. You just let me know when you're back. <clears throat> I will uh, share screen. As I do so, Praise, what are your thoughts so far? Is our good friend Dan, and we do appreciate the engagement with him, always a lot of fun. And we've got other uh, of our evolutionary friends in the chat. Mark Reed believes he's related to a banana plant. He's very proud. Very, very proud of that. <laughs> and so it, it's good to have our, our evolutionist friends here. Uh, Praise, what are your yeah. thoughts on, on what's been presented so far? Do you see any fallacies here? Do you see any issues with, with what's being presented? Yeah, I do see that Dan is trying to leverage technicalities to try to undermine Kent. I don't think that is a... Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the right way to go about things. I think that Dan can do better. And it is it is like a, a like a, a this type of fallacy. It is a pedantic fallacy, but it's called nitpicking is another way to look at it. And it's a way of gatekeeping to try to gatekeep. And I just think those type of antics that Dan doesn't need to resort to that. I think he's a little bit I think he's better than the usual internet evolutionist like Mark. 
no, I mean, no disrespect to Mark. He is an internet evolutionist. But then we have people like Dan, who's just that little bit level above that. We just expect more out of him. See, here's the thing. When we're looking for evidence for evolution, we're looking for differentiating lines of evidence. They're simply pointing to mechanisms that are actually excellent mechanisms for change in the creation model. If God created species to change, then guess what? Change over time is not a definition of evolution. If God created species to change and adapt over time, then everything Charles Darwin wrote in The Origin of Species so long ago is actually a creationist argument. And so for that, I want to say thank you, Darwin. Okay, what do you have next for us? A fossil record? Yeah, we could get into that. Where's all the countless, the innumerable transitional forms if, if evolution were, was true? So we can move on to one argument after the other. And it's not going to provide evidence for large scale evolution. Kent, good to have you back, brother. Yeah, and Donnie, what um, the the fact that the human, or any animal, any any living thing, the gene code has the ability to produce a variety is evidence of design. I've said General Motors sometimes puts heaters and air conditioners in the same vehicle. Right. They don't they don't know if it's going to warm climate or cold climate. And so for God to give the dog the ability to have some 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 puppies have thicker fur. Well, they can survive in the colder weather. And some have thinner fur, and they need the hot weather because they'd overheat with the thick fur. That's not evolution. It's an example of design. So all the mechanisms he's showing here of selecting this improved gene is really part of the design feature. That's all. I bet if you went to Alaska, you'd find all the cars up there have heaters. Some of them might not have air conditioner. They don't need them up there very much, you know, just as an example. So the the giving the mechanism he's missing the point entirely and if he if you put him on the program tonight he's going to miss it again i promise you okay he's going to try to divert attention you didn't answer my questions here we're going through exactly what he said gene duplication is not going to be a mechanism to make something new it's duplicating already existing really complex code that's right. It's forward thinking. Like you said, GM puts an air conditioner and a heater in their car. That's forward planning that requires a forward thinker who would be God. Right. It's design diversity. So these mechanisms are great mechanisms for creation change, but not evolutionary change. Well, and then ev uh, the natural s selection can select. I, I've said many times, if you took all the dogs in the world and turn them loose in Alaska, turn them all loose up there, come back in five years, what are you going to find? Only certain body type survives. It's cold. So you're probably going to find the body type like a wolf, thicker fur, thicker body to hold the body heat. You won't find the skinny dog surviving because, you know, the surface area to volume ratio problem, they're going to freeze. You won't find uh, uh, greyhounds surviving because the th they got short fur, okay, short hair. That's, it's not creating anything. It's selecting. And that's where I just, I don't know how they can't get it. Natural selection selects. It doesn't create anything. It only selects. Anyway, go ahead. <clears throat> Let me answer this real quick. Put this up on the screen. AJ says every car manufacturer put AC and heater no matter where the car is going. Actually, the reality is there are many cars, very cheap cars that don't have an air conditioner. A lot of your manual cars with your stick shift, they don't have an air conditioner. So what the evolutionists would do is look at that. Compare, let's say you have a Honda Civic manual without an air conditioner, <laughs> and then you have a Honda Civic automatic with an air conditioner. They're going to say the automatic with an air conditioner evolved from the one without. That's what they do with these organisms. And, and these are extrapolation fallacies, I would say. Well, and he's mis completely missing the point. AJ misses it all the time, okay? This is <laughs> selecting something that's already existing. And for the designer, for God to design animals, where one human and one man and one woman can produce 10, 20, 30 kids, and they have differences in them. They're still human, they're, and the differences are limited. You might have a kid that's short. I end up with a kid that's five feet tall, or end up with a kid that's seven feet tall, but you're never going to get one 3,000 feet tall. There's a limit, okay? And they don't understand it. They refuse to admit it. Well said. Praise. Continue on, brother. get new traits how does recombination work how does genetic recombination work okay well if, genetic... I, can enter, if I can mod again and, I, and i'm sorry so you do have a question um yeah but again for the for the audience what we're looking for is evidence for evolution so mm -hmm. maybe maybe dan maybe for your next uh response 
just grant that Kent doesn't know the nomenclature or whatever, whatever, and just provide a, an argument or something like that. That'd be cool. So, um, okay. so please repeat your question, and How? then your quiz, and then we'll let Kent uh, answer, and then maybe you can give the evidence we're dying yeah. to, to have. So ask your question, please. How does genetic recombination work? Okay, the genetic code of any living creature is more complex Correct. than the entire space shuttle. It's more complex than the entire space program. The genetic code from one person tied end to end and stretched out would go across the solar system twice. There has to be copies of that code made. The DNA has to unzip itself, make a copy, zip back together. Sometimes it gets mistakes made, mutations in the copying process. But the copying process of the, of the code is so phenomenal to find a mistake in it and to get it to recomp to make a duplication, for instance, duplicating the genes. If I if I say here, I want you to read this book. Tell you what, I'm going to give you 50 copies of the book. It's still the same book, okay? Copying That's this, a re duplicating the same information is not going to create anything new. It's a duplication of the same information. That's time. So Dan, we're going to give you, mm -hmm. we're going to give you 46 seconds to provide your actual evolution evidence instead of a quiz hopefully this time yeah hey, well. so so i do i'll start by pointing out that if kent knew the answer he would have answered the question instead he went to his script about how complex dna is instead of actually saying here's what recombination is here's how it works and here's why it's not evolution right um but he didn't do that because he doesn't know how recombination works but the way you get new traits via recombination is by combining this thing and that thing, and now they mix and uh, they mix and match together through double-stranded DNA breaks, and then you get a new allele that didn't exist previously. Okay, um, hold on, Johnny, what about Johnny, horizontal gene transfer? That's a good one. That's a good. If he's going to go on to another one, okay. And again, he's saying Kent didn't know, and I did know, and I do know. Okay, the re recombining existing gene code is not creating something new. Okay, it's like if I had if if uh, quite quite a few books that I've written, sixty-seven books. Suppose I had them all in in my computer. And accidentally, one paragraph from one book got transferred to another book. In the middle of the story, it got a different paragraph. What's this have to do with it? That's A, that's not going to improve it, okay? And B, in, in real life, you'd have to get two of these of the opposite sex, in, except in San Francisco, at the same time, in, in the same place, and they got to find each other and, and, and have, make babies. And then that, that mistake, the DNA recombination, that has to be passed on. Where is the evidence for this happening? Where is the evidence for this happening trillions of times to turn an amoeba to a whale? They can't give it happening. They can't show examples of it happening once where it works. And again, you're back to the Hitler problem. If one did get an improved gene, all the rest of them have to die or it doesn't work. It gets swamped back into the population. So they don't show it happening. <clears throat> they don't show how you could get two at the same time of the opposite sex in the same place. And they don't show how you're going to get around that problem of swapping the population. It's a religion. The title of your thing was perfect, Donnie. Evolution is nothing but a religion. Prove us wrong. And they never did. And they won't tonight. And they won't ever. Go ahead. That's right. Great points. It goes back to what we've been saying, that these mechanisms are great mechanisms for change in the creation model. Recombination happens during meiosis, and all it does is it's a process that produces new combinations of alleles when pieces of DNA are broken and recombined. That's a, that, that's an amazingly designed mechanism that God engineered into living organisms in order that that front-loaded DNA that we talk about, we get new combinations of it every generation, produces change, but that change is built in. This isn't adding adding anything novel, anything meaningful that evolution would would require. Praise, go ahead, brother. Good mechanism. Does Kent know what horizontal gene transfer is? We're well, off to a new question before you answer. Yeah, the I am. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna, I don't even know what that is either. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. The, I'm just gonna uh, interfere one more time. So um, I'm not sure how like the stream is gonna go if we're gonna continue running the Dan script of the mini quizzes or what but I, as I just, soon as kent can answer we can have a conversation for evolution as soon as he can answer we can have a conversation about that topic right, okay, let me jump in. If, if, if i could steal man he doesn't know the words then we can't have a conversation about it right? 
Wait, if someone tried so, to have again, a I'm going to jump in. So if well, I could hang on, Donnie, let me just make a real short, just 30,000 mm -hmm. foot view thing. If someone tried to have a conversation with me about quantum physics, I could not have that conversation because I don't know what the words mean, right? So I'm trying to find a topic where I could have a back and forth with Kent. In order to do that, we have to establish common understanding of like what the basic terms mean. And hang so on. far, no, 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 he, recombination, he, oh, through the uh, Luria Delbrook hang test. On. He's not trying to do any such thing. He's trying to avoid the obvious that he does not have any evidence for that how we change from an amoeba to a whale and a human and a, and a penguin. He doesn't have any evidence. He's trying to completely avoid the topic. He's not trying to establish a common vocabulary. I'll give you a common vocabulary. Your, your textbooks are claiming that an amoeba turned into a human and a whale. Show me an example of this, of any, show me, of just an amoeba or a bacteria. They've done experiments for years where bacteria, which have a very short generation time, you know, they get, they're born, grow up, get married, and have babies in eight hours. So you get three generations a day. One scientist can watch a thousand generations in one year. So where is the evidence of a bacteria ever producing something that was not bacteria? There is no such evidence anywhere. And again, if you could get a single cell creature per start to grow an arm or a leg or an eyeball, who's it going to marry? They just, they won't admit it's something they believe in. It's, it's, they live on spon in SpongeBob world. It's oh, Ken, I, as you know, they'll respond by saying, oh, that's what we expect. Bacteria produce bacteria, dogs produce dogs. That's the law of monophyly. If a bacteria produced a non-bacteria, that would falsify evolution <laughs> is what they'd say, brother. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Praise. Oh, I think you've got it up on the screen. You're good to go. Genetic drift, constructive neutral evolution. We even found that because Kent hasn't known what any of these words mean. And Sam said we should just stipulate that. So I have to keep trying new topics to find something Kent and I can talk about. So and, Dan, and if, if I could jump in before anybody goes, I, 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 guys, I'm going to jump. I'm going to steal man, Dan. I, I understand what you're saying. We're going to give Kent a chance to respond. I and think so, uh, as, evidence, evidence, revolution. I think Dan totally missed what Sam as moderator was doing. He was saying, as we like to do, people do it all the time in debate. Just for sake of argument, ju just pretend that you're making your point here. Now show us why these mechanisms are evidence for evolution. Let's get off the pedantic fallacy and move into him answering the question you've asked several times, Kent. How do these mechanisms help you in taking a fish to fishermen, in taking uh, microbes to man? But I don't think we ever even got to that point. No, he's going to dazzle us uh, rather than, well, there's a, I'm gonna get him this t-shirt right here. I, I'm gonna modify it just a little bit, let's see. If you can't dazzle him with brilliance, baffle him with <clears throat> cow manure, we'll change it, okay. Uh, <laughs> That's what he's trying to do. Plasmids. Okay. Yes. I'm familiar with all the things he talked about. I had to review some of them. It's been a long time since I did that. Okay. But so, so what? All of his script, the entire thing was to avoid answering the question, where did all these creatures get the DNA code to begin with? He wants to very badly skip over the first, like I said, the first four uh, pro de pro parts of evolution. He, he, and he did a brilliant job. He skipped over. Where did cosmic evolution, chemical evolution? Th this is all an essential part of the theory. It's like me saying, well, if we had a herd of elephants that could fly, stop, stop, stop. There's no such thing. So stop right there. Any more story we tell after that is, is fairy tale stuff. And anything they say, well, if we start with an ex a DNA code, stop, stop, stop. You, you didn't give me how the DNA code got there from a dot of nothing exploding. Where did time, space, matter come from? Oh, no, we don't know. How did life get started? We don't know. But let's assume we have life. No, I'm not sorry that he wants to skip those first four steps. He has to. All of them do. AJ does too. He won't answer that. He'll say that's not part of evolution. Yes, it is. It's essential part of evolution. They don't, they'll never admit that. Anyway, go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. No, that's good. It's a good point. One thing they don't want to focus on are like you're saying chemical evolution organic evolution the major challenges to their model all they want to do is present agnostic lines of evidence like these mechanisms that can go either way or better explained 
in the creation model. But once you get into the origin of these sophisticated systems, Kent, as you pointed out, they always lack an answer. Oh, we don't know. We're working on that. Well, you're going to be working on it for a long time. <laughs> we'll say that. Praise All God, right. brother. Donnie, yeah, go ahead, Kent. My Wednesday night whack an atheist uh, program typically goes about 30 or 40 minutes. I don't want to get my uh, listening audience. We got a whole bunch of subscribers uh, more. Let's just go a few more minutes and quit. We'll take Dan another time if you'd like. Yeah, why don't we do this? Uh, as we were saying pre-show, just because I think it is good to keep this an hour, keep it digestible uh, for people. And then we'll put the challenge out there right now. We'll do another open mic challenge sometime in the next week or two. Sure. And for those who have anything they want to uh, respond to here, any objections, challenges like Dan, Dr. Dan, if you're listening, then we'll set aside some time for you to come in and, and engage uh, Kent. So I like that idea. Okay, we'll, we'll go a, a minute or two more and then we'll start to wind things down. Go ahead, praise. Solution, you're looking to recombination and then also horizontal dream, gene transfer. So you've described recombination as basically being this process where you have pieces of DNA, they're broken, then they're recombined, they're shuffled to produce new combinations of alleles is what you said. And then horizontal gene transfer. Oh, well, hang on. I asked Kent. We, we got to see if Kent can okay. answer that. That's no, but, 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 I, I, it, not just defining it, but these are what yeah, you're but saying. Let's see if he can do it. Donnie. I came here to trait. talk to him about this stuff. Let's see if he can do it. I would like the audience to notice uh, that everything he has said is assuming we already have DNA. He can't do it. Nope. That skips over the first four steps. Where did matter come from? Where did time come from? So you can't just jump into that. Where did life get started? You want to start, like I've said earlier, this is what you guys always do. You don't want to talk about the first four because it's a religious belief. You want to start with the DNA code and talk about how there's horizontal transfer, how they duplicate or make mistakes or alleles, and how that there are mutations. And this is somehow going to drive this process. I'm sorry. You're missing the point completely and tell and purposely missing the point. Right. Pause it there, praise. Start with Ken, you nailed it. Those mechanisms are not going to drive what they portray on the tree of life. Yeah. As creatures reproduce, genes get shuffled. That's recombination. This creates new chromosomal combinations of what? Pre-existing variability that God designed into living organisms. Again, all, right. all the evidence he's providing is actually really fantastic evidence for our position. And when you look at the reality of it, in real life, the mutations, the recombination is almost always harmful, fatal, or neutral. If you could get a good one, I don't think anybody's proven a good mutation, but if you could, you're back to the same problem. Who's it going to marry? Yeah, those beneficial mutations, they need to spread. They need to come about, accumulate, and spread throughout the population. They need to become fixed. And there's no evidence for this. That's what we've been saying all along. Guys, it's not science. It's a story. You're telling a story. What if this? What if this? What if, what if? Where's the evidence of it happening? There isn't any. But they got to cling to this because that's all they've got. Otherwise, maybe God made the world. Oh, no, we don't want that. Because he might have some rules we don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's evolutionary philosophy, brother. So why don't we stop there? We got plenty of evolutionists in the chat. We're going to put the challenge out there. We're going to do an open mic very shortly. And so for those that want to join and challenge anything that we've said, respond to any of our rebuttals or commentary, then we'll put it out there and we'll, we'll set aside some time for you. So Dr. Dino, appreciate you doing this. This is fun. I, I always enjoy these response videos. Let's hand it to you for some final words, final thoughts. Okay. I predict when you do the uh, uh, open mic, like I have one tomorrow night on our channel, okay? They're going to go, oh, look at the squirrel. They're going to, they're not going to go to the question, where's the evidence of an animal changing to another kind of animal? They're going to try to divert attention, use big words, bamboozle them, uh, dazzle them. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so sad. I feel bad for these evolutionists. They're, they're trapped by their own, um, they're, they want to be trapped, I guess. They don't want God telling them what to do. And that's the problem. Whether you like it or not, God made the world. He owns it. He makes the rules. And he wrote a book and told us how he did it. He used 40 different men on 15, or three different continents over 1,500 years to write a, a coherent book. I'm holding a copy of it here. He loves you and he wants you to come to heaven. But you're sinful. So am I. But I've been forgiven. Mine's paid for. And yours isn't. And it's not going to go well for you judgment day. I'm the best friend you've got. And you don't even know it.
Call me, 855-BIG-DINO. I'm extension three. I'll answer if I can. It's a busy life around here. Sometimes I'll say, please text me or call back later. Is it busy around here or not, brother? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal down here. So, yes, I, I'm here to help. Now, if you want to waste my time, I'll just label you TW in my phone and time waster and <clears throat> only answer if I've got time, if I'm driving across Texas or something. Anyway, thank you, Donnie, for doing this and for uh, tonight. Uh, I really would like to help these people, but I realize we're probably not going to help many of them. But I hope we can help some of their audience to realize they have been absolutely bamboozled. Evolution They've been is dazzled. A, that it's a religion. It's nothing but a religion. And you're welcome to it. Keep it. But don't call it science. That's all. Thank they, you. They've been dazzled by the wild imagination of an evolutionary biologist. So appreciate, <laughs> appreciate those final words, brother. You get some rest. You've earned it. That's for sure. And we'll chat about uh, an open mic soon for the, uh, the, the evolutionists. Those that believe they're related to strawberries and whales, feel free to join and challenge us. So, Amen. okay, right. we're going to wrap things up. God bless all. Thank Stay you.